Ladies and gentlemen of YouTube, I am Zombie Cartman, and this is the zombie proof base for Daisy. Oh, oh, that's my line? So if you've built a base in Daisy like we have, you'll quickly figure out that the fence panels don't seem to stop zombies from coming over. I don't know if this is some sort of bug in the game, or if this is how it's meant to be, but we put all different types of things on the walls, including barbed wire, metal panels, etc. And it doesn't seem to matter if it's a wall or a fence gate, they're just going to climb over it. Now, at some point, I realized that the zombies will not climb the outsides of the watchtowers, which had me wondering if we were to build a fort that was nothing but watchtowers, if we could keep the zombies from coming into that fort. So here I am trying to leave my base and getting stuck in a throw animation. This is the same button you use to open the gate. And we're going to run up the hill here to my zombie-proof base. And as you can see, the zombies cannot get in here. So to build this base, you're going to need a lot of different supplies. You're going to need approximately 16 different logs, as well as at least 100 to 150, maybe even 200 planks. Not really sure on the plank count. And you'll also want to have at least a hatchet, a hacksaw, and a roll of duct tape so that you can repair the hatchet, as well as the watchtower kit. And you'll want to go to a fairly open area like I do here, or at least a pretty big open space to fit this fort. And you'll want to kind of spin around in that open space and make sure that everywhere within it is a viable spot for watchtowers. And once you decide on the placement for your first watchtower, go ahead and set that down. And hopefully you'll have done this somewhat near a forest or maybe you got a car or some friends that can help you transport logs because they are incredibly difficult to harvest in mass quantities like this. Like I said, you will need about 16 logs, which can take quite a while to get. So get to chopping. Now to build the base for one of your watchtowers, you're just gonna need four logs. And to actually build that base, it's kind of tricky. You gotta stand in somewhat an exact spot directly over the log so that you actually get the build the base prompt. There I was trying to dig for worms, but here you can see it actually says build base. And you kind of have to go to the other side of the log to get that prompt. Once you get that first base built, you can go ahead and take your watchtower kit Oh, my guy's thirsty. Hydration. Hydration is paramount. Now we can grab the watchtower kit and we can go ahead and place our second watchtower, which you'll want to do a good square 90 degrees off the side of your first watchtower. This can be somewhat difficult to do because when you go to place the watchtower, you can't really turn your head. You know, there's no free look or anything like that. So it's kind of difficult to actually line these posts up. So one trick I did find is that you can start to place the watchtower and while you're actually placing the watchtower, then you can kind of turn your head 
and see if you're lined up. And if you're not lined up well enough, or if you don't think so, then you can just stop placing the watchtower and just keep trying to do that until you get it placed, like I said, in a perfect 90 degrees off that first watchtower. You want all of your entrances to your watchtowers to be facing inboard like I'm doing this one. And you want them to be square, that way the whole build is square. That way there's no gaps between the watchtowers. So with the base for watchtower 2 placed, we can go ahead and build it. Like so. That looks pretty good, no gap right there. Now at this point, I went ahead and built a lower frame on the outside of my first watchtower just to make sure that I could do it. I don't believe you guys will have to do this at this point in the build, but I did it, like I said, just to test. I even did it on the second side of the other watchtower just to make sure that it would go as well. And you can see here I'm lining up for the third watchtower just by walking through the first one. This pretty, pretty much makes it easy to set that one square. And we'll go ahead and build the base for that one. Each time you set one of these bases, you just want to make sure that there's no major gaps between the poles. And here we go with the last watchtower. Just trying to get these posts lined up just right to ensure that there's no gaps. And we'll go ahead and place it. And then we'll go ahead and build it. Now that we've got all four of our watchtowers placed, we're gonna need to go and get a whole bunch of planks. Like I said, at least 100 to 200 planks. And a pro tip for when you're harvesting planks is to go ahead and build yourself just a single fence panel somewhere near the planks. When you're cutting planks, they're gonna cut into bunches of like five, maybe 10 or 11. And the most that planks can actually stack is 20. So whether you have one plank or 20 in a stack, it's still going to take up that same 16 spaces of inventory space in your car or backpack or hands. So you want to make sure that you're maximizing the amount of planks you can actually take when you're going to harvest planks. And here I am in Berezino, which was kind of a drive to go and get planks. So like I said, I want to maximize the amount I can actually carry. So this is the most reliable way I've found to actually stack planks into your inventory properly. You can just go over to a fence panel and go ahead and place the maximum amount it will take, which is 20, and then go to the fence panel's inventory and quick move that to your inventory, and bam, you've got 20 planks stacked into a stack like that. This may be a lot easier on PC, but on Xbox and I'm sure on PS4, this is not an easy task. So this, like I said, is the most reliable way I've found to actually stack your planks which, like I said, helps you maximize the amount of inventory that you're using. So back here at the base, we're gonna get started with building just the bottom lower frame all the way around the structure. You're gonna need to build, like I said, a lower frame on the bottom section of each one of the watchtowers. I believe it takes about five planks and maybe like 12 nails for each panel. I'm not really sure on the nail count, but I believe the planks is five. So you'll wanna just build all that like so.
Now, once you've got the entire lower frame built, you'll notice that it is kind of difficult to get in and out of this thing. I do recommend that you build this fort or base on somewhat of the edge of a hill like we did so that you can kind of run downhill and jump up onto the fence panels. If you were to try to go from a downhill slope uphill onto these fence panels, you probably wouldn't make the jump ever. But going from uphill to downhill makes the jump fairly easy. And now that you've got the lower frame built all the way around the base, you're going to need to go ahead and build the four roof sections for each one of the watchtowers. Or, you know, it's just one roof section for each watchtower being a total of four. And go ahead and build the stairs for each one of them so that you can easily get up and down out of the middle section of your base. This can be a lot of building and you'll lose materials all over the place because there's going to be fence panels and different inventories that you can access with all your different materials. I find that it's easier to move materials simply by grabbing them off the ground sometimes. Depending on where you're wanting to place them, you know, you can easily just stand over an object and hold X or square or whatever it is on PC to actually grab these items off the ground. Or like I'm doing here, you can actually just move things to your hands in your inventory and then place them like that. Whichever way you choose to do it, you just got to get all four of these floors built. Now, once we got all four of our floors built, we decided that initially to frame out the entire underside like you see here, just to test it and see if that would work as a zombie proof base. And as you can see, it did not. The zombies just run right through the frames for some reason. So we decided to go ahead and build a wall section along the lower part of the entire base. Now it's important to note that you do not need that upper frame at all. And in fact, after some further testing and figuring out that we didn't need it, we went ahead and removed it simply because we had a panel open over there by the car, which is where we were jumping in and the zombies weren't breaching through there. So we figured they wouldn't breach through any of it. And once we had the whole thing built, we went ahead and fired a shot at the city to alert the zombies of our presence. We try to get them to come out here and test the walls of the base. And as you can see, they don't know what they're doing. In fact, I don't know what they're doing. Like always, I appreciate everybody watching this video. And I hope it makes your Daisy experience last even longer.